All right, welcome to today's podcast. This is Scott Engler. I'm your host. And today is going to be about a topic I am very familiar with and is extremely important for job seekers, which is networking like a rock star on LinkedIn for your next job. So I'm sure if you're listening to this, you likely know that networking is has consistently been the number one way that people found that th- their next job. It's, it's an interesting thing though, because I feel that even though people understand it, they don't, I should say we don't often tap into it. And what I'm going to talk about today is really the consistent experiences I, I found in my own life and my clients with networking and why it really is so, so important. Um, just, you know, quick update. I know that uh, they say about 70 to 80% of jobs are gotten through networking. I know the number one way that people got jobs last year, according to LinkedIn's data, was uh, through employee referrals, which you could likely assume most in most cases, those were from, you know, people's network and networking with people they knew. And the first thing why that's so important as well is because when we're, even if we're on LinkedIn and we're wanting to brand ourselves or to communicate our services, there's no easier sell than to start with the people that already know your, your capabilities. And those are people that you've worked with before that know, like, and trust you that maybe they're your clients, maybe they're your boss, maybe they were, they worked for you. Uh, you know, that's a, you know, another big thing is people that I typically work with are in leadership or executive positions and nothing speaks higher to capability of a leader than being a good leader of, of, you know, people, right. And having good reviews from their clients, um, or I should say from their staff. Right. And so it becomes this interesting, uh, what's the word I want to look it's, it's just what's fascinating to me. And this is what most people do. Maybe you're not, maybe you're the exception is we often immediately start looking somewhere out there. We were assuming there's something out there that we need to do or find or someone we need to connect with. Uh, in order to get what we want. Where the, the most interesting part I found is that people find the most success, and this has been myself and my clients, within their own network of people they've already known. And we often dismiss it and we're like, ah, you know, I, I already know what my friends do or these people. And I kid you not, without exception, every time I've had a client and they apply reconnecting with, you know, people on their LinkedIn and finding, um, you know, old email accounts they had and, and uploading those and some of the tips and tricks I, I show in my become a LinkedIn networking rock star, um, MP4 training, uh, they, they have opportunities coming to them. I mean, it's, it's become so standard at this point that it just doesn't surprise me. I mean, two weeks ago, I just had a, another client tell me, um, you know, after a week and she, she used, uh, some of the tools in the become a LinkedIn networking rock star, uh, MP4 I have in my course. And she said she had already connected with someone. This is after a week connected with someone that worked for a company that she was interested in working with. She didn't know that this person now worked at that company and she had obviously changed jobs over the years and they had an appointment to speak together. And, you know, that was, that was a direct result of her, Um, using some of the tools to to reconnect and find people on LinkedIn that they hadn't spoken to in a while, um, uploaded from your old email accounts or, you know, um, different sources that I do show on that, that recording. And it just, you know, it's, (laughs) I was excited for her, but I was so, it's like, I almost became jaded by it is because it happens for, for almost every one of my clients that some, some story like that I'll hear. And, you know, it really just continues to reinforce uh, my belief in the power of networking. As a matter of fact, I will never forget taking a moment to look at like the last five jobs I had had maybe over, you know, the course of a certain amount of years. And I want to say that 90%, so maybe like four out of five of the last jobs that I'd gotten 
were as a result of a, a referral from a friend. So, you know, the proof was in the pudding for me as well. And I think, you know, without really um, challenging, I think we all have this tendency to want to like look for something out there um, instead of looking within our own network first. So that is always what I tell people. Uh, it's that reconnection and getting in touch with the people that know your credibility. And I think that for a lot of the people that I end up working with, the challenge for them is that they are at a job and there, there's this fear, right? They're really afraid of reaching out to anybody because they think it's the biggest deal in the world that they're looking for a new job. And there's just, there's so much secrecy behind it. They feel um, shame, they feel guilt. They think that, you know, they're gonna get judged, that they're gonna get found out. There's all these feelings, right? And, you know, knock on wood, I haven't had a client get discovered. I'm doing quote marks right now, if you could see me, but you can't. Uh, from from reaching out to people in their network privately, right? And letting them know their situation. So again, that's really a matter of taking the time of us working together, taking a deep breath and saying, who that you've worked with do you trust? Who do you feel safe to reach out to and let you know what's going on? And without exception, when we make a list together and you know they start reaching out to people, they're always amazed that people are a lot more supportive than they thought more than happy to write them a recommendation or hop on a phone call and might even have an opportunity for them and so you know it's it's a matter of smart networking too right uh you'd want to reach out to people that you feel safe to share around and, and it's going to be a little scary it always is for for my clients but you know until we come out of hiding and share what's really going on, how are people gonna know if they, you know, how they could help you? So that's, that's really the first step is getting over, um, you know, your fear there and apprehension. I, I really do understand it's hard. Uh, it is hard. I remember even um, after I had written my first book on job searching, um, or shortly after I had, yeah, actually shortly after I'd published my first book on job searching, I'd gotten my, my uh, dream job that I'd always wanted. And then um, period, you know, fast forward a period after that, uh, I got let go from that job. So I was really resistant to reaching out to my network and saying, hey, I need a new job because, you know, I just, not that long ago, I'd published a book on job searching. So I really felt a lot of apprehension. And I know I've shared this on another broadcast of mine, uh, I wrote this email and I kind of just, you know, addressed the, you know, addressed it in the email and said, this is really hard for me, especially because I just wrote a book on this not too long ago. But, you know, I'm at a place where, uh, you know, I am looking for a new job. And, you know, luckily I had, you know, done, done my homework enough to be able to like articulate what my specializations were and how I felt like I could best contribute. So it wasn't necessarily this like desperate, hey, I need a job, everybody help me. It was a very clear um, you know, email to my friends being very genuine and open. And I had so many, I mean, overwhelming amount of emails back with my friends and colleagues or you know, whatever, former professors, bosses, reaching out to me and letting me know about job opportunities. I mean, it was, it was miraculous. Um, I'll never forget that experience, but up until then, it was extremely difficult for me to, you know, to humble myself like that and to, you know, really be vulnerable like that. And I'm not saying that you have to write an email, you know, to a bunch of your friends like, like I did or my email connections. Um, you know, it could just be, again, you know, reaching out to people. A lot of my clients just reach out to, you know, people on their LinkedIn privately and they might do that to like, you know, 10 people, right? Because, you know, People aren't always on LinkedIn anyways, and people are busy. So just reach out to the people that maybe it's a, a easier first step might be to reach out to the people that you do trust and feel safe rather than a, a blind email. And again, if you are still working somewhere, um, you know, that wouldn't be the wisest decision to, you know, send an email to all your Gmail connections like I did, but I wasn't working at the time. So, you know, again, it's just contingent upon what next step feels best for you, what makes most sense, but anticipate that it will be um, scary, 
you know, but again, there, there is the light at the end of the tunnel and people I work with consistently find that opportunities are on the other side of them reaching out and letting their network know what's going on. So that's what I got for today. Uh, I hope this reached you guys and made sense. I know a lot of people, you know, there's kind of this like, there's more than one ways to skin a cat. A lot of people always feel like, oh man, you know, I gotta optimize my profile and make it look really nice before I start connecting. That's another thing I, I just wanna address real quick. They're like, I gotta make my profile look really good and you know, update everything and just polish it off before I start connecting with people. So while that's not a, that's not a bad strategy, here's the challenge with that. Um, if you're not working with a professional, most people end up stalling on that anyway because they find it challenging or they, you know, they get mixed up doing other stuff. Um, I wouldn't let that stop you and here's why. I would, I would reconnect with people that already know you first. Um, you know, if you're going to start connecting to other people that don't know you or whatever or get like really serious about your job search, uh, that's a great thing to want to upgrade your profile. However. If you're just wanting to reach out to people that you already know and to add like, you know, people in your Gmail connections on your LinkedIn, why not do that first? Because that might be the momentum that you need to get moving forward. And hey, you might find an opportunity and have an upcoming job interview in, you know, a couple of weeks, and then you'll be really motivated to upgrade your profile really quick and just do a, you know, as good of a job as you can, or, you know, I'd always recommend hiring a professional, you get a better job anyway, it'll improve your chances. But my point is, is that if you um, reconnect with people that already know you, you don't really have to sell yourself in the sense that the people I'm exp talking about are people that know how you are in the workplace, right? People that have been your clients, people that have been your boss, have worked for you, um, a partner, whatever. So they already understand your value. You don't have to sell them, right? It's it's really the people that don't know you where you know you want to brag appropriately and do your branding and all that stuff where that makes it a little bit more challenging. Now the companies your friends might refer you to or your network, that's a different story. And again, but my point is, is that don't let that stop you um, from connecting with your network that you already know, uh, you know, upgrading your profile. So it doesn't necessarily have to be in that order is my point. I hope this was helpful for you guys. I'm going to leave something. I just made this as a new MP4 for people to purchase. It is my, uh, keynote presentation and my last year it was a breakout. You know, I spoke at a state conference for the same thing. It's become a LinkedIn networking rock star. Really, really great uh, material I'm sharing how, basically I'm just sharing how I was able to connect with the top leaders in my own industry in the world um, as a you know knucklehead nobody and how I did that on LinkedIn, how I was able to build my business on LinkedIn through networking and how you could do the same thing. And then I also do a site demonstration where I show you guys those tools I mentioned earlier about how to um, upload your Gmail connections. A lot of people don't know where to even go for that. So it's great because there's a training. I share you know, what most people do that's not effective networking and then I show what's worked really well for me and my clients. Um, I show people you know, another guy comes on and shows how he, he was being successful recently with in-mails. Um, I show how to do an advanced search. Uh, so there's a lot of site demonstrations too. So it's great because a lot of people find the LinkedIn site uh, not very user friendly. So because there's a site demonstration on the recording, you know, people have always told me it's really great because they can go back and see what I did um, so they don't get, you know, too confused and how they could apply those same things as well on LinkedIn. So that's going to be a link in the information box on the YouTube video. And remember, the path to experiencing different results starts by first asking different questions and then taking different actions one step at a time.